A disabled girl who is a fan of the Miraculous Ladybug show reached out to the main screenwriter, Thomas Astruck. He often likes to respond to fans' messages and their questions, sometimes reasonably, sometimes not so much. However, this time, from the answers of the main screenwriter, we can learn a lot about the backstory of the main character's birth and the history of the entire plot. It's very interesting. The girl asks, Hello, I would be interested to know if we will ever see a character with a disability in the storyline. For example, someone who is deaf, mute, blind, or in a wheelchair or uses crutches. I myself am a wheelchair user. I really like that there is Kagami's blind mother in the series, but she is actually a very minor character. After this, the girl continues to clarify her situation. As a representative of a person with disabilities, she really misses seeing such people in shows and series. In movies, important characters with specific health conditions are rarely portrayed. It has always upset her that she couldn't find a character similar to herself in her childhood, and not much has changed in the present. Thomas Astruck noticed her question and started responding to it extensively and in detail. There will be many answers. Thomas shares, Once, I worked on an episode that was supposed to feature a character in a wheelchair. The plot required showing their interaction with other characters. However, when we placed another person next to the one in the wheelchair and leaned them down to have a conversation, Observers told us that it looked wrong and inappropriate from an outsider's perspective. It seemed like condescension towards the person in the wheelchair, Thomas continued. After making those adjustments, we reworked the scene so that the characters interacting would remain standing at full height. However, now observers pointed out that this was disrespectful to the person in the wheelchair, who would be forced to be below everyone else. Any interaction and communication posed significant ethical challenges for the studio. It became very difficult both technically and conceptually to execute any ideas. The slightest interaction could be misunderstood by the audience. But suddenly, Thomas Astruck reveals the original role of Adrian. Initially, Adrian was conceived as a person with a disability. However, he wasn't supposed to be in a wheelchair. Instead, he was meant to walk with a crutch at all times. This crutch would transform into Cat Noir's staff and superhero rod when he transformed. At first, the producers agreed to everything we could propose without any restrictions. But over time, after working on the concepts, the main distributors of the series became afraid that our team wouldn't handle such responsibility and wouldn't be able to accurately portray all the intricacies of these people and their lives. As a result, these concepts were rejected and put on hold. There exists concept art of Adrian with a crutch or Kane. In this image, I clearly see the presence of Bridget, Marinette's original alternate personality. Previously, Marinette was portrayed as a persistent, flirtatious, and love-struck girl named Bridget, and they showed her in the anime version of Miraculous Ladybug. However, next to her in the picture is not Felix from the anime version. Here we see a new Adrian, a good-natured guy who walks with a crutch, and I noticed one detail. Adrian looks completely unstylish. He appears like a shy, humiliated boy, dressed in old, faded clothes. It's as if Adrian's whole personality was meant to be different. He wasn't rich. He wasn't a famous model. But Marinette wasn't shy. On the contrary, she always tried to support Adrian in everything. His interaction with Marinette could have evolved in a completely different way. Dreaming about a parallel reality as Ladybug is unusual and intriguing. I am a real pro at coming up with wild theories, and I had this thought, what if in the reality where Adrian is disabled, the whole Hawk Moth storyline started with an accident in which Emily disappeared and Adrian got injured? Adrian lost his mother and his health, and Gabriel Agreste blamed himself for everything. He lost his wife and put his son in harm's way. Now Gabriel will want to fix everything by making a wish using the Miraculouses. But Adrian will accept this reality. He didn't go to school for a long time because he underwent extensive treatment in the hospital after the accident. This explains all the plot points about Adrian's absence from school and society. Gabriel Agreste kept his son locked at home for homeschooling because he was afraid of losing him just like he lost his wife. But Adrian grabbed the cane and asserted his right to go to school with everyone else. It would have been very logical and consistent with the storyline we know, making it even deeper and more understandable. Adrian wanted to live a full life. Yes, he's sick and walks with a cane, but he's determined to be just as good as everyone else. And I believe that in this moment of determination, Adrian would have assisted Master Fu, which is how Adrian gained possession of the Cat Noir talisman. And suddenly, as he becomes the superhero Cat Noir, he transforms his cane into a cat staff. 
It's precisely because of this backstory that the hero Cat Noir walks with a staff as his tool. It's a tribute to history. And imagine how ironic all this would look from the outside. Gabriel tries to defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir to bring back his wife and heal his son. Meanwhile, his own son is fighting him as a superhero. Both characters helped each other live happier lives in this world. Gabriel, as Hawk Moth, tried to do everything for the sake of saving his family. And Adrian, battling Hawk Moth, felt useful to society, found healing through his suit, enjoyed life, and fulfilled himself through these missions. Receiving healing from his suit, Adrian would start valuing his parallel life more seriously. He would fall in love with Ladybug. But Marinette loves Adrian with the cane. She simply can't pay attention to a completely healthy and cheerful Cat Noir. It would be disrespectful and strange. However, she doesn't know that they are the same person. So much intrigue. So much justified logic and interesting moments could unfold. Building theories is so exciting. If you liked this, give it a like and I'll be really happy. Leave a comment too. The girl who asked the question at the beginning of the video thanked Thomas for his detailed explanations after receiving the answer. She shared that her favorite TV show has always helped her feel better, and the episodes have reduced her chronic pain. She's very happy that her questions were noticed and addressed. The screenwriter left an addition. The refusal to use characters with significant differences doesn't stem from a lack of desire to portray such people. Rather, the studio is afraid of doing something wrong. Fear and a high sense of responsibility hinder them from implementing such ideas. However, they will strive to explore this theme more on screen. Thomas says that many ideas and concepts related to this theme are floating in his mind, and someday they will find their solution and realization. In recent times, I feel there have been too many easily offended people. Society is too quick to judge the actions of anyone. It seems that no matter what you do, you will still be considered guilty. These limitations scare authors and hinder creative progress. Easily offended individuals tend to point fingers at others without realizing that their own overly aggressive actions make them less respectable individuals. I love the freedom of self-expression, and after the realization, every viewer can decide for themselves what they will watch and support. But after this whole dialogue thread, I came across a very interesting comment left on the topic of the main character's illnesses. Someone suggested the idea that Marinette could also have an incurable illness requiring constant care, like diabetes or asthma. This health condition would give Marinette the ability to leave class at any time and go save Paris. She could use the excuse of needing to take medication or manage her condition, which would be a valid reason for her absence. But immediately, some people in the comments had a different opinion, stating that such behavior would discredit real people with these illnesses. They argued that after Marinette's behavior, people might start suspecting others of deception and abusing their health condition. There is a general tendency that everyone can find something to be offended by and judge, but that's the nature of our complex world. It's surprising how many fans Chloe has, despite her numerous unkind actions. Yet even her fans are judged by someone else. Oh well, I'm sure all those judgmental people don't realize the many things they themselves could be held accountable for and need to justify. I really enjoy the serious themes that occasionally appear in Miraculous Ladybug. I particularly liked the mysterious illness of Rose. I made a separate video about her condition on my channel. Kagami's mother being blind also caught my attention, and I liked the part where Natalie appeared with special braces attached to her legs. These serious elements in the storyline make the whole story more realistic, more lifelike, and more intricate. Subscribe, leave a comment, and visit my Mindful Madama channel. See you!